Hi, this is Mark Hibben for Technomicon Media with our video review and guide to the new iPhone 5. And here it is. It's really gorgeous. The quality of manufacture is just stunning. It really does give the impression of being machined from a solid block of unobtainium, but the case is now just plain old aluminum. In this review and guide, we'll explore the performance of the new iPhone both in benchmark tests and the kind of real-life performance tests that we do such as application launching and web browsing. We'll also look at the usefulness of the phone for work and play, trying out iWork as we did last year in our iPhone 4S review, as well as checking out some of our favorite games on AirPlay. We'll also look at some issues that cropped up with AirPlay performance and of course, we'll look at the new Apple Maps. Uh, although Maps is uh, far from flawless, uh, we'll try to put matters in perspective by comparing with other mapping programs, as well as offer users some mapping alternatives for iOS 6 devices. Let's start by looking at the features of the new iPhone 5. The 5 retains the familiar control layout of previous iPhones, but the case is now anodized aluminum, and the phone is slightly longer. The back of the phone is aluminum, except for a pair of glass inlays at the top and bottom. The screen is now 4 inch diagonal with a pixel resolution of 1136 by 640. Apple is sticking with LCD display technology for now, and the screen sharpness and contrast are the best you can get using LCDs. Some users have complained about scratches appearing on the iPhone 5 case. Anodized aluminum is now used for the cases of all the current generation iPods and iPhones and provides a variety of color options, but anodizing is not particularly scratch resistant. We've noticed minor dings and abrasion already appearing on our black and slate version of the 5. These would be much less noticeable on the silver white version and we recommend this color combo for prospective iPhone 5 owners who are concerned about scratches. One nice feature of the 5 is the inclusion of Apple's new EarPods. I can't tell any difference in audio quality compared to the best in-ear phones, but the new phones are noticeably more comfortable to wear for long periods. This seems to be due to the fact that the EarPods produce great bass response without needing a tight seal in the ear canal so they can be worn loosely in the ear. Earpods also come with a built-in microphone which uh, may help with speech recognition in noisy environments. Now one of the significant changes to iPhone is the smaller simpler lightning connector which replaces the traditional 30 pin docking connector. At the other end of the cable is just a plain old USB connector as you can see right here. Here's the lightning connector. Now I'm sure lightning is an improvement in durability over the 30 pin connector and it's impossible to insert backwards. However, the lightning adapter that Apple plans to ship soon won't be compatible with the digital AB adapter that has been available for HD video output from iPads and iPhones. And here's that little digital AB adapter right here. This leaves Apple TV as the only currently available option for HD video output from iPhone 5. Now let's take a quick look at the specs for our various test devices. The iPhone 5 uses the new A6 processor and there's some uncertainty at the moment about the clock speed. The A6 appears to have a variable clock rate a technique that has been used for years in Intel processors. This allows the processor to conserve battery power when idle, but gives the processor maximum performance when needed. The A6 also features dual processor cores in the A6 System on Chip, or SOC, and these appear to be custom designed at Apple, rather than licensed from another manufacturer, and I sure hope this is true. 
The rear camera has the same basic specs as the 4S, but is an all-new design in a smaller physical package. The 5 has twice the RAM of the 4S, but the same amount of flash storage. To the usual GPS and compass, Apple has added GLONASS capability to the 5, making it even more of a world phone. GLONASS is the Russian GPS system. Apple has also upgraded Wi-Fi capability of the 5 with dual band 802.11n. Finally, our Verizon version comes with 4G LTE capability, as well as third gen GSM useful for travel outside the US, and that's what requires the SIM card. Although the Transformer Prime was not a focus of this review, we include some test data for comparison purposes since the Prime has a very capable NVIDIA quad-core processor running at 1.3 GHz in the performance mode setting that we used for these tests. A great deal has been made of the faster A6 processor in the iPhone 5, and in benchmarks, the 5 does test out considerably faster than previous iPhones or even iPads. In our real-life testing, the performance advantage doesn't appear that great, so let's start with the real-life tests. In the application launching tests, no other apps are running in the background, and we measure launch time by counting frames in the video recordings. First, we try Google Earth. Then launch Apple Maps. Next, YouTube. I work numbers. Then we launch Safari to CNN. And then use a bookmark to go to the Technomicon homepage. And finally, we test the preview button response time. Now let's summarize the results. The iPhone 5 wasn't faster in all of our real-life tests, but when it was faster, it was usually by a large margin. Speedtest X measures network download and upload speeds, and we perform these tests using our 802.11n network, as well as over cellular. The 5 features Verizon LTE, which offers a factor of 10 improvement over the 4S in download speed, and was actually faster than our wired high-speed internet which was maxed out by the iPhone 5. In the benchmarks, the 5 lived up to its reputation, easily besting all comers, sometimes by a factor of two or more. Still camera performance is considerably improved over the iPhone 4S. Here is a still from the 4S which shows the difficulty the 4S has with high contrast scenes. This image is nice and sharp with good detail, but the sky color is washed out due to overexposure. The same scene imaged by the 5 shows the true color of the sky, but doesn't lose detail in darker portions of the image. The camera autofocus on the 5 also works very well for close subjects, whereas the 4S had difficulty getting the image in focus. In 1080p video, the differences between the phones are much less noticeable. Both phones produce video at 30 frames per second, and this contributes to motional blur when panning. It seems to me that the 5 produces less blur than the 4S, but both phones produce more than a consumer camcorder, the Panasonic HDC TM90, which we show for comparison purposes, and which records 1080p video at 60 frames per second. The Panasonic also uses optical image stabilization rather than image processing alone to remove camera shake, which also helps reduce blur. Although phone video cameras are good, they still aren't quite up to the level of a good HD camcorder. iPhones and wireless equipped iPads have excellent GPS systems, and as we showed in our Maps launch demo, 
the position quickly converges to an accuracy of about 6 meters. While Apple Maps provides high-resolution aerial views for urban areas of the U.S. such as Los Angeles, we found the Apple database lacking for rural areas. Here we compare Apple Maps and MotionX finding my locale in southern New Mexico. This was the major shortcoming of Apple Maps that we observed in our testing. We also compared route finding capability of Apple Maps and MotionX in urban Los Angeles and in rural New Mexico. In Los Angeles, Apple Maps performed flawlessly and even provided alternate routes. MotionX also performed flawlessly but didn't provide the alternate routes. We also liked the turn-by-turn -turn directions of Apple Maps better. These were more detailed and provided important information such as which lane to be in when making freeway transitions, which MotionX didn't provide. We next compared route finding in rural New Mexico between Apple Maps and MotionX running on the new iPad and Google Maps running on the Asus Transformer Prime. We're using the iPad in this case only because the screen size makes things a little easier to see. We found no difference in Apple Maps and MotionX performance between the new iPad and the iPhone 5. Now as you can see, all three mapping programs give the same route leading from my house, indicating a right turn onto Raven Road. And all three mapping programs are wrong. Now what I'd like to do is take us outside for a moment to show you why turning down Raven Road is such a bad idea. And this is Raven Road, and as you can see, there's a warning sign here that says Fire Lane Utility Easement. It's not even a real road. It's a four-wheel drive trail. It's intended just for emergency use only. And there is an alternative route that most of the residents typically use. Well, we're back, and the point of this was not to make excuses for Apple Maps. I'm sure it needs a lot of work, and it will be improved over time. Uh, I just wanted to put things in perspective and demonstrate that there's no such thing as perfect navigation software. And if you expect the software to be perfect, you're going to be disappointed.